I had a recent video where I showed these pastels that I made. Anyway, these were small and there were a whole bunch of little, little bitty pieces. And I might put in a photo of what I'm talking about. So what I did was I went through and I made bigger ones. So let's swatch these because they're different. They're a little bit different because I combined colors and I'm gonna do this real quick. And then I'll go through and I'll show you the steps that I used to make, to make them. It's a nice big pile there. Before I swatch these, so what I'm gonna do, let me push this out a little bit. Here's the larger pastels that I made from the smaller ones, which were all about this size. And now these are substantially larger. But what I'm gonna do before I swatch these, is gonna, I'm gonna take this rice. It's just regular old long grain. And I'm gonna put it into this tin. I'm gonna put all of it, all of it in there. What this will do is help keep the pastels clean. And as you can see, they're already starting to pick up from each other. In fact, I think I might, I have, I have another tin here. And I think I'm going to pour some of that into here. And that way I can separate them a little bit because when I was pulling out the pigments that I had used to make these, to make these initially, I came across more. And there's, and you see this was stored in rice also. But there's, I don't know how many in this bag. I'll go through these on my own. I won't put you through it. I've got paper towels. To kind of clean those off with clean these off with i didn't even bother to label these because I, I pictured having these like outside and i can just go after the paper and i'm not too worried about um names or ooh, that's pretty this one was really rough it was too wet when i form the, the log or the roll and so it's got some rough edges on it. Like what I did was I, I put together, you know, like a whole handful of these little ones that were all the same color, you know, like all the grays and just went ahead and made a big one. But you can see how this the size of these would be great if you were outside and you wanted to do something really large. I did work on the PDF for, for you all to download. These are super, super soft. Oh, that's interesting. I must have just rubbed up against that yellow. My allergies are acting up really bad. And so I don't know about me messing with the powders too much. So I'm going to be talking you through it. I'm not going to be doing a demo because this, this right here is probably more, more dust than I should be subjecting myself to at the moment. Oh, that's a nice bright see if these are laying in there like this they're not hitting up against each other and that rice helps to take off when you're you know moving it around it helps to take off any any dirt that you have on there and that was all of them let me get these put up and I'll talk you through how I did these. So I'm going to interrupt here and say, make sure you wear your gloves, wear your mask, 
and take all necessary precautions. Another reason that I don't think I should be breathing this in is I came across this and I don't know if it actually has cadmium in it, so I don't want to take that chance. But in order to make these, you'll need some calcium carbonate, gum tragacanth, I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. And these are the packages that I, I received these in. They were in these, you remember this was 25 years ago though too, or 22 years ago. And then there were some like this, and there were, I think there were also some little ones, but I believe those have all been used up. And iron oxide, which is also Mars red. Anyway, I've got some, some pigments here. I don't remember what I paid for these so long ago. And then this is raw sienna. So I've got some, apparently I've used up all my yellows. I don't have any blues in here, so I must have had had some smaller containers of blue also. But anyway, in the PDF, I give you some resources on where you can get these things. I don't have, I have absolutely no idea about the current prices. Gum Tregacan. Okay, what you're going to do is you're going to take this gum No. You also need a palette knife, some paper towels, a piece of glass works really great if you've got like a glass cutting board, if you can get something like that, that's wonderful. Some small mason jars, I would suggest at least three. Avoid breathing, dust, do not eat, drink, or blah, blah, blah. Um, that's another reason. I, in order to use these, I'd have to be wearing a mask, and I don't know that the sound would work very well. So, so you've got, pretend like this is glass, this blue. You need a some masking tape, an eyedropper, mask, latex gloves. See, look at that that's already got on there, just from picking that up. Another thing, it's good to start with earth tones when you're making these. Um, pastels. One, they're a little less expensive, and two, they're a little less finicky, and they will, the earth colors will very easily make a, a nice, smooth, soft pastel, and if you've priced pastels, they're really soft ones of any size, especially if they're handmade. The reason that this makes me nervous is if this has cadmium in it, this is not good to have around. Um, most manufacturers are taking the cadmium out of everything because it has long-term effects health-wise. So you're gonna take this gum, I'm gonna leave this in the bag too, it's double bagged here. So This is your binder that holds your, your pigment together and the softness of your pastel is going to be determined by how much of this you add to the pigment. So I'm, I'm doing this just for illustrative purposes. You've got three jars. You're going to label them A, B, and C. Put a piece of masking tape and just write it on there. And what you're going to do in, in jar A, you're going to put approximately two cups of water, okay? With one teaspoon of this gum. Teaspoon, not tablespoon, okay? You're gonna leave this setting overnight, this jar, this imaginary jar and overnight it's going to get kind of a strange cons consistency it's going to be like a thin starchy liquid then what you're going to do is you're going to take half of this and put it into b ok 
okay? So you've set your gum out and you've let it get starchy looking and you take half of that and you put it into B. You want to add the other half water, so it's a one-to-one -one ratio. Okay. Then three, because now we're doing on three. On three, you take half of B and half water. Same thing, one-to-one -one ratio. Okay. And you can have more jars than this. This is just, this is how I did it, and it's a good place to start. I think it keeps it, keeps it manageable. So pretend like those are your three jars. You always want to be wearing gloves when you're doing this, even though these look terrible. That could be my skin. I'm not breathing this in or soaking it into my skin. So wear gloves. Then what you're going to do, and I'm not going to do this with the pigment again because my allergies are going, going nuts the last few days and I just don't think that would be smart for me to do. I would be paying for it for days. So then what you're going to do, pretend like this is pigment. You're going to take some of this pigment out, say a couple tablespoons. You're gonna take some of this out and you're gonna and lay it on your glass and you're gonna make you're gonna have a little mound there and then just make a hole in the center of it. So it sort of looks like a donut. Then you're gonna take one of these solutions, A, B, or C, and you're going to put some with an eyedropper into the center. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your palette knife. And it's just sort of like, like folding your eggs in. Just fold that moisture into there. And it takes a little bit for the pigment to absorb it. Some pigments also, you'll want to add a little bit of this calcium carbonate. It'll help it from being quite so brittle. Uh, some colors like Van Dyke Brown, you wanna add just a little bit in order to, to help it out. But you've blended this all up and now it's like a putty. It's you've, you've waited, you've mushed it, and this paste should be thick enough that it does not stick to your fingers or your gloves. Okay. So you're gonna take this paste, let's pretend like, uh, let's get one of these. Does that show up okay on camera? Yeah. I'm gonna take this label off here too and you're going to lay it on the table and you're going to roll it with your finger back and forth this way parallel to your finger not this way but this way okay look at the pastel that's coming off of there this will give you a more even roll if you do it this way then once you get it to the size that you want, if you do that on a sheet of newspaper too, it'll help absorb any of the excess moisture. Then what I would do, I would run test if it was me. If you did this with A, turn around and do it with B and C also. And once they dry, you'll be able to see which, which one is the best consistency for you. Then you want to take one, take this, put it on a sheet of paper or a paper plate or whatever, and you're going to let it set and dry for at least 24 hours. Depending upon the size, of course, then once you've done that, once you figure out which one works best, you can start getting some different values. If you didn't make a whole lot at the first, say you've got this and that's it, and don't worry about it. You can make more as you go along, as long as you have enough white pigment available. Uh, you can also buy titanium white, which I don't have here. So now you've got your chosen stick. Okay, now you can start making some values. These are no longer jars. This is white pigment, okay? You've got 
you've got your, your stick or your um, mixture with your pigment and you take half of it and you mix it, you mix it with white, okay? So the full strength is gonna be this first one, okay? This is what you start with. Number two is going to be half and white, half white, half pigment, okay? Then you're going to take this pigment, well, it's still wet, you haven't let it dry yet. You're going to take half of it and mix it again with the one to one ratio. So then you're going to see, start seeing some values. This is gonna be your darkest, medium, and then your lightest. And you can just keep continuing to do that for however much you want to get whatever you want. If you want it darker, if you want this color darker, mix it with some Mars black pigment until you get the value that you want. And you can use the same formula only toward darker. So you're gonna take it and mix it one-to-one -one with, with the black, break it, and then, yeah, then do half of that with some black pigment, and then half of that, and you'll, you'll get darker. Once your sticks are dry, what you'll wanna do is label them, a mailing label or whatever, and stick it around it. Um, that's what I did here on these, and this label is 20 years old and it's still there. But, and then but roll it all the way around. Don't label it this way. Label it all the way around. And then write on it, like this one has raw sienna. And remember when you're putting these labels on, the texture of the pastel is not gonna allow it to stick to the pastel very well. So you want to make sure it goes all the way around and laps over. Then, once these are dry and they look cool and you're just like, yes, I want you to take some rice, is usually what's preferred, and you can store these. Ta-da! And you can make these any size. Now this is, this is probably, yeah, this is three inches long and probably a good inch diameter. You can see the difference here. But you can test it back and forth, see what works best for you, what meets your needs. I was hoping there'd be some other colors in here, but there's not. I hoping there'll be some like cadmiums, and even though it makes me nervous. And you'll find when you're making these, you'll get into sort of a rhythm. And once you start, it goes pretty quick. Okay, well, that's it, folks. You can go to my website and see where, it, where to subscribe and there is a resource file that you'll have access to, and I'll just put the, the PDF file there. So once you subscribe, uh, it should be available to you. If you have any questions, uh, just let me know. And I'll Thank you for watching. And Bye. For watching and so thank you for watching. My husband's probably listening to me thinking I'm crazy because I'm talking to myself. Mm -hmm.